Good morning, saints. Pastor Vince here with you today with an invitation. I personally want to invite all of you who cannot meet with us for Sunday school to join us by video. Every Sunday morning since March 2011, we've been meeting at 7.30 a.m. in the youth building. I know many of you have children, jobs. 7.30 is early. But there is a group of people that I simply adore who attend, and we've been having a wonderful time walking through the Bible. Because of the size, space, and multiple services that we have in our building, 7.30 a.m. is the most convenient time available. We're presently walking through the book of Acts, and we are up to chapter 8. So I've decided to do a series of videos that will bring those who cannot attend up to date with the class. Believe me, I'd rather have you present with us, and maybe one day you will. However, until then, I still want you to be a part. I'll make these videos available through our church website very soon. Now, get your Bibles and let's get started. I'm going to tell you the scriptures we'll read, and I will read them for you. But for the sake of time, you should write them down and read them again later. How many of you like New Beginnings? The book of Acts tells the story of the people that began to lay the foundation for what we now call the church. The church was not a known organization at that time. The events and stories we're about to read began around 33 AD. There are arguments for early, earlier or later dates, so that's why I said around 33 AD. Jesus had just been crucified. That was the approximate year that the world rejected the Son of God. However, God still chose to love his creation, the church, or the ecclesia, spoken of by Jesus in Matthew chapter 16, was about to be born. Listen to what Peter says in one of the greatest messages ever taught in Acts chapter 2, beginning in verse 22. It says, fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him. As you yourselves know, this man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. It's like God was saying, in spite of what you've done, I'm going to extend my hand to anyone who accepts it. The church was going to be the means by which God reached out to a lost world and said, I love you so much that I gave my only begotten son that you may have eternal life. Paul the apostle also writes about the outstretched hand of God in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Paul unveiled the plan of God and how he would reach out to a world that just had rejected his son. He wrote these words in chapter 5, beginning in verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new is here. All of this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. I like this. Not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us, us, the message of reconciliation. We are therefore God's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The book of Acts is one of the most important books in the Bible. It gives us the history that led to what we now know as the church, the body of Christ. Now let me provide a little background on Acts. 
Most scholars believe that it was written by Luke, the physician, the same author credited with writing the Gospel of Luke. The writing styles are very similar, and both books are written to Theophilus, which means friend of God. Whether Theophilus is a real person or, or not, it's uncertain. Therefore, many scholars think it may have been written to all believers who are friends of God like Abraham. Because he believed God, it was credited to him as righteousness. The book of Acts is believed to be written prior to 70 AD when Jerusalem fell to the Roman conquest. That is too an important of an event to be left out if you were writing after the fall of 70 AD. Just imagine writing history about America after the year 2001 and not including 9-11. There are other supposed dates, but that's another argument. Now think with me for a moment. Right now, today, the whole world is focused on one major event the coronavirus. We don't know what will happen in the next 40 days. But now let's see where the disciples were 40 days before the events occurred in the book of Acts. Turn with me to Luke chapter 24. I'm going to begin in verse 1. It says, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took spices that they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men clothed in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners to be crucified and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all the things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed like nonsense to them. Peter, however, got up, ran to the tomb, bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. I can tell you what happened in hindsight. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead was about to change the whole world. Little did they know, though, that they were about to take on major roles on the biggest stage of all. They were right in the middle of the plan of God that was determined before the world began. The stage is now set for the book of Acts. After I read the following verses, we'll conclude for now until we meet again. I'm going to read from Acts chapter 1. It says, in my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen, after his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. It's been 40 days now since the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the grave. Now, let me sum this up for you real quick. I just walked you through what happened leading up to the book of Acts. I took you back to the tomb and the women who went there looking for the body of Jesus after the crucifixion. They were going to go and dress his body. When they got there and went inside the tomb, no one was there. Perplexed and amazed, they ran back to tell all the apostles what had happened. Remember, it's 40 days now before the book of Acts. And so the apostles, first of all, that's nonsense. Uh, I, don't, I don't know that we believe you. But then Peter, it says he ran to the tomb and looked inside and the body wasn't there. One of the most incredible things that 
I always remember and enjoy the most, I believe the absolute most, is when we go to Israel and we visit the garden tomb. Because like Peter, every time I go there, and I think it's been about eight times now, I look inside of the tomb. And I can tell you now with certainty, he's not there. And so with amazement, they were wondering what all this meant. What had just happened? Well, everything that Jesus had told them had taken place, and now a new curtain was about to be opened into the birth and the very beginning of the church, where now the church, the foundation is about to be laid by the apostles. They don't really understand it or know all that's about to happen to them now, but they realize that what Jesus told them about destroy this body, destroy this temple, and in three days I'll raise it up. Now they realize what he meant. The temple was destroyed or he was crucified on a cross. Three days later, the ladies go to the tomb and he's not there. Peter, hmm, what he said was true. So now what? What's next? What's next? Well, they all had encounters with Jesus. In the book of Acts, as I read to you, it says for 40 days after the resurrection, he met with them to make sure there were many convincing proofs that he was alive. Because this story was going to be told from that day forward up until right now, presently in the world we live in. That story is the same one that changed your eternity. One day when you heard the gospel message of Jesus Christ, it touched your heart. And you gave that very heart to Jesus. And you asked him to come into your life and to become your Lord and Savior. It started with that story. And these men in the book of Acts are about to lay the foundation. Like I said, it's considered to be written before 70 AD because, you know, that's a major event. In 70 AD, the Romans just annihilated Jerusalem. Luke, had he known that in his writing, it's pretty certain that he would have wrote about the fall of Jerusalem. That's why the date or the early date of prior to 70 AD, it's believed that Luke wrote the book of Acts. So now Jesus has set foot on the earth after his resurrection. And the book of Acts will begin to tell the story about the life of Christ and the work that he did in his disciples. And that message, as Paul said, makes us ambassadors for Christ. Paul said, I just choose to preach Christ and him crucified. That is the message. That's the message that saved you. But there were a lot of things that had to be done before the real, I guess, first opening act really gets going in Acts chapter 1. The disciples needed something. The gift of God, the promised Holy Spirit. God was going to give them power to do exactly what he called them to do. You've heard me say this before, but there are really only two kinds of people on planet Earth. You would say, yeah, there are all kinds of races, creeds, colors, nationalities, and you would be right. But really, it all comes down to two groups of people. One group who has the spirit of the living God in them and the other that does not. Because the distinction between the two is this. The Bible says those who have the Spirit of God belong to God. And those who do not have the Spirit of God do not belong to God. So there's really only two people or two kinds of people on the planet. Which one are you? I have the Spirit of God in me. And I fit in that first category. And it's nothing to accredit to me. It's just that the realization that Jesus is the Christ as Peter said, the son of the living God, and it, that acknowledgement of him in my life changed my eternity. This story is about to be told for all time. Men will reject it. People will belittle us from time to time about the gospel message, but we cannot help but preach Jesus and him crucified. So I'm saying to you, this is where we're going. 
So read the scriptures I gave you, and I'm going to send out another video, another series of videos soon. And I want you to catch up with the class. And I want you to join us. Because by video, you'll be able to stop and start, reflect, meditate, go over the scriptures again, and do whatever you need to do to understand the message. Because just like the, the generation we're living in right now, they had a generation too. And they had to accomplish what they had to do in their time. Now we're the generation also that has the message of Jesus Christ. And we are now ambassadors to Jesus. We are those that God uses to make his appeal to be reconciled to God, as Paul said. He was talking about us when he said, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. That's us. That means to me, my sins are forgiven. It means to me that whatever I did in the past, and some of those things I'm very ashamed of, but they've been wiped away, washed away under the blood of Jesus Christ. And now it says he's not counting men's sins against them. I'm free from my past. I'm free to live the life that Christ has called me to. And so are you if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to be a part of our Sunday school. I want you to join us. I want you to walk through the Bible with us. You'll have the video. You can watch it with your family. I'm just kind of going to kind of lay the groundwork, the foundation. And then I want you to do your research. And I want you to just to begin to explore the Bible on your own. I just want to give you more ammunition, things to work with so you can develop in the faith. Here's what it says, Paul said in 2 Timothy, study to show thyself approved that a workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But avoid all godless chatter and genealogies and things of that nature. For this reason, it only increases ungodliness. What we're trying to do is know the message of God. We're not trying to develop arguments and things to fight with others about. We're trying to understand the message of God. So that when you speak God's word, it's as if God is speaking through you. Okay, that's enough for now. But I'm going to send this video out and I, I want you to be a part of our Sunday school. Like I said, it's early, 7.30 in the morning. I wish you could be there. When this virus thing is done, we'll be back together. And I, I'd love to see you. I love you. Can I pray with you before I go real quick? Would you bow your heads at home? Father, in Jesus' name, I just ask you, Lord, to expand our knowledge, our understanding of the Word of God so that we can live by it. I pray, Father, that these videos will make a difference in somebody's life. I pray, Lord, that it would start something or birth something in people that would just inspire their hearts and set a, a thirst or a hunger in them to know what the Bible really says. Yeah, Lord, I know there'll be different arguments and different beliefs and thoughts and people believing this or that, but I'm simply gonna read what the Bible says, that Jesus was put on a cross, died, buried, but on the third day, he was raised. That is our message. So Lord, bless them, I pray. In Jesus' precious name, we give you thanks. Amen and amen.